Hey everyone, Bob WP here, and welcome to Woo Biz Chat, the Do the Woo Podcast Show. Woo Biz Chat is sponsored by Air Wallets. The online payment plugin allows you or your clients to localize your WooCommerce store checkout experience by enabling customers to pay with preferred currencies and payment methods. And Omnisend, the solution for email and SMS marketing with their CRM solution for WooCommerce shops and your own website while saving you time with pre-built automations that drive sales. I'll tell you more about our sponsors later in the show, but let's dive into another Woo Biz Chat. Okay, welcome everybody to another exciting episode of Do the Woo Biz Chat, where we dive deep into the world of WooCommerce and everything that powers successful e-commerce businesses. We are again your hosts, Emma Young and Adam Weeks, and we are thrilled to have you here with us today. And hopefully we can explore some exciting new trends, tips, tools, and anything to help elevate your site into uh, new heights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Emma. Yes, that's right. We are joined by uh, Anthony Tran today. He's the marketing director of Beaver Builder, one of the leading page builders in the WordPress ecosystem. He's here to share his expertise on how page builders can revolutionize your WooCommerce site, enhance your customer experience. Anthony, welcome. We are so glad to have you. You and I have met uh, a few times, and it's my pleasure to uh, welcome you onto the show. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, it's good Good to have you. Anthony, would you mind just sharing us a little bit about your background, how long you've been at Beaver Builder? What is a Beaver Builder for those who may not know? Yeah, um, I'd be happy to. So uh, I started my entrepreneurship journey in 2013. I uh, left my corporate job and I started a podcast. And I Here was we go. podcasting hey. about uh, digital marketing and it evolved into uh, creating my own WordPress uh, web design agency. And my wife and I were uh, building websites using Beaver Builder in 2014. And that's how we learned about Beaver Builder. And after a couple years, doing the agency work, Beaver Builder was looking for a marketing director. And why I said, wow, this would be such a awesome opportunity with my marketing background using Beaver Builder. And I joined the team, um, I think 2019. So I've been with them for about five years and it's been a lot of fun. So I'm happy to be here and happy to dive into WordPress or Beaver Builder or wherever you want to take us. That is like the ultimate customer success story ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you used it for a web agency and then now you're the director of marketing. That's awesome. Um, do you happen to know by any chance where the name Beaver Builder came from? Yeah, so there is a cool story behind it. And Robbie's shared this on a mini podcast. But basically uh, what they told me was when they first created the business, it was called Fastline Page Builder. And it's not a great name, not great branding, but their agency was Fastline LLC. And so they, uh, Fastline Media, sorry, Fastline Media. And someone, I guess after their first initial launch, it didn't really take off at first. And they had some customers that used it. They liked the product, but they said, hey, maybe you can kind of work on the brand name. And <laughs> and so Robbie and the guys went and, and just kind of brainstormed, hey, let's figure out what kind of animal builds something. And I think they came up with some really wacky names at first, like, oh, like spiders create webs and like bees make hives. And one day, I think Robbie came in the office and he's like, what do you think about Beaver Builder? And they all kind of chuckled about it because it just it was kind of like goofy. And then they kind of slept on it and they're like, you know, I kind of like it. It's kind of got a fun ring to it. It's fun. It's kind of like has our, our, you know, our personality and we think it'd be fun. Let's see what happens. And of course, uh, it, the name stuck and it became what it is today. Fantastic. It's it's memorable. I was at CloudFest in Germany and we were talking to Robbie and I introduced him to um, the guy who started Groundhog. And I was like, we got groundhogs and beaver builders. WordPress is full of quirky animals. But I wasn't sure where we could go with that, but it uh, it didn't go anywhere <laughs> other than it's memorable. So well, well done to, to Robbie for <laughs> something that sticks in your brain. So... WooCommerce and page builders. What I wanted to pull out of, of this episode is this idea about where these two intersect. And 
I'm, I'm kind of curious what your take on how does someone know if a page builder is, is right for them or if it's not for them, if they're starting a, a, a store, what's your general sense? We'll kind of start from a high level and then we'll work our, our way down. From a high level, why would someone want a page builder? You know, Beaver Builder being one of them, but there's a number of them out there. There's Elementor, there's Divi, these different page builders. Why would someone want to use a page builder? Well, from a high level, page builders are great because if you're looking to create a website and you maybe don't know how to code, you're not a developer, or you just don't want to code, you want to be able to easily drag and drop layouts on the front end of your WordPress website, then a page builder is perfect for you because that's kind of, I don't know if you all remember back in 2013, how building WordPress websites, it was like you would pick a theme and you would get stuck with a certain layout. You can change the colors and font a little bit. And every time you adjust to something, you got to refresh the screen, open up on the front end and see what it looks like. Well, page builders is nice because you see everything and it's very intuitive. Just drag and drop. And uh, so from a high level, I think page builders are great for anyone who wants to be able to custom, build custom websites um, and have a lot of flexibility to do so um, with that. And as far as a, from a WooCommerce perspective, um, I think it works great. Like it's just a perfect pairing, especially with Beaver Builder, because WooCommerce out of the box is just a great solution for anyone who wants to create an e-commerce website with uh, WordPress. Out of the box, you can have your shop, your cart, your checkout page, your product layouts, those are all going to work out of the box. But what Beaver Builder and Page Builders do is it takes it to the next level where you can create custom layouts for your shop, custom layouts for your product page, your checkout page, your cart page. So all those shopping cart experiences can now be customized to match your brand and be consistent throughout your entire website. So that's why I really like Page Builders with WooCommerce. Nice. Excellent answer. Thank you. Yeah. It was really good. It was like all the questions that I wanted to ask as a follow-up were, were just, <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, he's good. I could, I could see our podcast experience of background. So maybe you can kind of go into another thing, like a, an additional plugin that can help enhance all of these Beaver Builder features. Well, uh, thank you for leading with that question because, or the follow-up question <laughs> because um, Beaver Themer is an add-on product that we have that actually allows you to create all those custom layouts uh, uh, with WooCommerce and Beaver Builder. Um, the good news is, and I was actually going to tell you this in the later part of the podcast, but we actually are going to be including Beaver Themer in all of our pricing packages soon. So now people can get the power of Beaver Builder, Beaver Themer, and if they want to you know, create WooCommerce websites, it's all going to be in a nice package for you. You can use it and be able to create it. And we also have a free video tutorial course on how to create e-commerce websites using all of our products with WooCommerce. Nice. When you had said the power of Beaver Builder, I, I kind of, there was like a He-Man, She-Ra, kind of the power of Beaver Builder. <laughs> well, you know, Brent, he's our design lead and he always likes to create these theme beavers, especially during Halloween. So I might mm. have to give him that idea say, hey, maybe this year we could do like a Thor beaver. Yes. There so. you go. Yeah. We've been trying to get him to do a Batman Beaver, but you know he hasn't got around to that yet. <laughs> Batman be- a lot of alliteration going on there with Batman Beaver Builder. Oh, very cool. All right, so from a high level, there's the customization that a page builder can bring you. What challenges might someone that, and this may, if you have any kind of case studies, anybody that you're thinking of, what type of challenges can someone run into as they're building out their e-commerce shite site using Beaver Builder and, and WooCommerce? Is there things that you've seen people like, hey, these are the things that you need to avoid or you're using Beaver Builder wrong? Uh, anything that you've seen that might be some of the challenges? Well, I think when anyone's using any kind of new tool or software, uh, there's always going to be some kind of a learning curve, right? But I think what people can find confidence in using WooCommerce and Beaver Builder is both those products have been around for a very long time. Beaver Builder is around for over 10 years. So the product's very stable, very mature, um, and you know it's not going to go anywhere. Same thing with WooCommerce. WooCommerce has been around since, I don't, I don't, I mean, probably since WordPress started, you know, back 
2009 or so. They're very reliable. And the good news about it is if you do have any questions, there are so many video tutorials, so many courses, so many YouTube videos about both of these products that you're going to be able to find any answer to any question you might have. Um, so yeah, there's a learning curve. You might run into some roadblocks, but you can simply Google and find your answer to whatever roadblock that you have while you're creating these the e-commerce site. Uh, do you think there's ever a case or or maybe you've seen an example where a page builder was maybe not the right choice if it ever is? Yeah, I think someone's looking to create a basic online store and they already have like a, a WordPress theme that they just really love and they want to use then that might be just a good fit for them. They say, hey, I already have a theme I like or have an existing site, and I just want to be able to plug in a e-commerce platform to be able to add some products, then that's perfect for them. They can ins install WooCommerce, use the default styles and settings, and they're off in the, on, you know, with the races with creating their e-commerce site. They don't have to start over with a new page builder, new website. So if they already have a pre-existing site or they just want to build something very simple or they want to use a very specific theme, then yeah, then maybe a page builder is not the right fit for them. Got it. Um, sometimes when you run into the hardcore WordPress person who is, you know, like, you know, wrote the code themselves, so I have seen this thing where page builders get a bad reputation or you don't want to use a page builder. What is the source of that angst that you may have seen out there? Well, just seeing how WordPress has evolved over the years, I think, like you said, some of those hardcore WordPress maybe were the people that were there from the very beginning. And they like to hand code WordPress themes and their websites. And so maybe they feel like, hey, a page builder kind of takes away the fun of hand coding things that the way they're used to. So they might have not completely adopted the idea of a page builder, but I think if they open, if they're open to exploring it, they'll find that, man, it really speeds up their development time, their time to build websites, and they still have the flexibility to add code if they want to. So that's one of the thing, nice things about Page Builder. It's a pretty much a, a no-code type of product, but it does allow you to custom code, add your own HTML, CSS, JavaScript, things like that. So you can do customization if you like to, but if you want to use a product um, out of the box without it, you can. The other thing I will say that there's a lot of misconception when it comes to using page builders is people say, oh, it impacts speed or performance. But there have been so many case studies that have been written online about people perf doing performance speed tests with page builders, even Beaver Builder, that have proven that page builders are actually very fast and it's not the main cause of slow performance. Because when building a WordPress website, there are just so many factors when that could impact speed like slow web hosting services, if someone installs too many plugins, if people upload image files that are too large and they haven't been compressed, or they're not using other speed technology like caching tools and CDNs. I mean, there's so many other factors when it comes to speed and performance that I think people are being narrow-minded uh, narrow if they're thinking that it's just a page builder that's slowing down their website. From those hardcore WordPressers that like to do everything themselves from coding everything to see the beauty of a page builder and what was it maybe that ended up like changing their minds yeah i mean we get testimonials and feedback reviews all the time from people who say the exact same uh you know aha moment where they said i have been a diehard non-page builder person for many years i've been code hand coding everything myself and i've finally tried out beaver builder or other page builders and wow I'm blown away. This is amazing. I'll never go back to hand coding everything myself. And, and that's just like a fun turnaround story that we love to just hear because, you know, I don't think I, that people have to necessarily choose one way or the other. They can actually have a hybrid of both. You can still use page builders and you can still custom code on page builders. So I don't think people have to like 
plant the flag and say, I only choose one side or the other. Yeah. I, I, I love how you, you go through testimonials and you get to know your customers. Beaver Builder has an incredible community. People always, you have a very active Slack. A lot of people that are in there talking about Beaver Builder. Curious, is there anything, anybody that stands out that used Beaver Builder in a surprising way? Or there's this idea, I just have this idea that you make a tool out there and someone uses your tool in a way that the creator wasn't expecting or beyond the kind of general idea. Has anybody surprised you? Like, wow, you made that with Beaver Builder? Anything that stands out? Wow, there's just been so many great websites and examples to choose from. It's kind of hard to pick. But what recently has surprised me was um, there's been a lot of college websites that have been created using Beaver Builder. Really? Yeah, very recognized institutions. Like if you Google college Beaver Builder college websites, we wrote a blog post about, I think it was like 13 colleges that created uh, their websites using Beaver Builder. And I'm just going to you know, name off a few, for example, like Harvard, MIT, Berkeley, USC, University of Florida, UCI. I mean, they, the list goes on. These are all really prominent schools. And the nice thing is, is um, these colleges are actually teaching these students how to build websites using Beaver Builder. And I will give another example that I was recently a part of was a 48 and 48. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that. It's a nonprofit organization that helps build websites for organizations that need websites. And basically they ask for volunteers for people to build 48 free websites for organizations that need websites. And they build them in 48 hours or less. And they're all using Beaver Builder to create these websites. And I got to be part of the judging panel to select, uh, you know, the top three. It's just fun. You know, uh, they just, it's just some recognition. But it, I was amazed that to see some of these websites that are created. I mean, full five, 10 page websites for these organizations. And I was very impressed by the quality of work that was done. So it was cool just to see people using Beaver Builder in the real world. That is so cool. I'm Googling 48 and 48 right now. And it makes me want to try it because I've just been trying to do a WooCommerce site on the side, like, you know, a couple hours here and there. And now I'm like, all right, I'm going to go home or go home. I'm at home. I'm going <laughs> to, after this call, I'm going to go get me a beaver builder. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go sign up for it and I'm going to make 48 versions of it. But this is like the coolest thing. I got goosebumps when you were telling me about this. This is a really cool, it should get more um, attention. I like this. Yeah, we're definitely trying to spread the word too because it's just a great cause and they're always looking for volunteers. So if you want to help build websites, if you know any marketing that you skills that you want to volunteer, they'll be willing to have you help them. And they always host this, I think like every quarter, there's like a new event. So it's really cool. The Air Wallets online payments plugin allows you to localize you or your client's WooCommerce store checkout experience. So any size business is able to grow without borders. Setup takes minutes and you'll find improved checkout conversion rates by offering Apple Pay, Google Pay, and 60 plus local payment methods. And since customers are not redirected to a different checkout page, that info is saved and you can offer recurring payments with WooCommerce subscriptions. What really stands out with AirWallets is merchants are not forced to convert foreign incoming payments to their home market currencies and those funds can be used to pay suppliers internationally. So literally, you save money all around. It's all there at airwallets.com. Whether you're a product or a site builder, OmniSend can help you with your customer or client's email and SMS through their CRM solution for WooCommerce. Product builders can bring their plugins and SaaS to a new level for their customers by integrating with OmniSend. And for you developers and agencies, recommending them to your clients for managing their customer relationships is spot on because it gives them the right tool to build their email and SMS lists, send targeted campaigns, create automation workflows, 
and track their results all from within their WordPress dashboard. With over 100,000 e-commerce stores already on board, have your clients and your customers get started for free by simply having them search for the OmniSend plugin on WordPress.org. I just want to quickly circle back to the, the college websites. So I'm also looking at that blog post right now that shows all of the images of it. So would you say, is there a niche or some type of topic that at least the Beaver Builder users tend to use it for? Or is it kind of just like covers all different types of sites? We've seen it all. We've seen it all. I mean, we obviously we've seen e-commerce sites with Woo. We have college websites. We have blogs. We have, I think, I think... Robbie even said there was like a NASA website that was using Beaver Builder. I mean, there's just some really cool, um, yeah, examples of websites. People build directory websites, membership sites. What else is there? Uh, yeah, I've, I've definitely seen a variety. Just simple landing pages. There's a lot of you can. There's so many use cases, and it's really neat to see. A lot of people that that use it. I mean, there's been over a million websites built with Beaver Builder. So there's probably everything that you can imagine has probably been built with Beaver Builder. That's amazing. A million. There's a lot. There's a number of brands in in WordPress that have a following, and I would say Beaver Builder is one of them. That just there's sometimes there's this tongue in cheek idea of your company needs fans and raving fans, and how to give. I would say that Beaver Builder actually does have fans and that is it is exciting to see that and I think your commitment to some of these projects where hey we're going to give back we're going to do this 48 and 48 like things like that are are spectacular. All right, shifting gears a little bit because Bob keeps bugging Emma and I that we've got to get our numbers up. SEO uh, for this podcast, we really Bob Bob which keeps bugging us. So I got to use the word AI a few more times, apparently. I'm kidding. Bob doesn't say that. But uh, that is, it's one of the transformational things of technology in this industry. Nothing is going to be left uh, untouched by AI in some way. And I'm curious if Beaver Builder has any plans, is there is anything's happening in that area? Yeah. What's, what's your take on page builders and how page builders will relate to AI now and going forward. Yes, AI is definitely moving very fast, I will say. And it's exciting. The internet before the internet became what it is today. And I think that's why people are so excited. There's this new technology. They're all trying to figure out how to be able to apply it to their business. And the potential is limitless. And the evolution in the last year or two has just been mind-boggling i just every time that they have a new announcement from open ai or google or you know facebook or something using ai i'm just like wow it's, it's amazing so anyways as far as when it comes to building websites i've already seen a lot of technology and products and softwares that have been created to help web creators build websites using ai for example i've seen ai to, you can help ai create site maps Obviously, they can write content, um, create stock images. You can spin up layouts, uh, AI that can kind of like provide brand colors, AI that can create logos for you. And these are all, a lot of these are separate products. And I think where page builder companies will evolve to is they'll find ways to integrate some of these special features or product capabilities into the page builder, which will eventually give someone more of an all-in-one solution for their customers. And so that's something that we've been exploring for our product as well. It's like, okay, we want to continue to evolve our product. We want to give value to our customers, but we also don't want to, um, I guess, a lot of big concerns about for page builders. People say, oh, we don't want page builders to have too much bloat. So there's like a balancing act, right? Like we want to add more features, but it's still got to be lightweight. It's still got to not impact performance. Uh, We want to give all these AI integration, but is it necessary? Are there other products or tools that are already doing it 
better that people can just rely on versus us trying to give the, a different version of it. So there's always definitely a lot of discussions on, on where AI fits in to our business model. But yeah, it's definitely something that we're keeping a pulse on. And it'll be interesting to see um, you know, how we find ways to use it. Very cool. Thank you. That's kind of a very nice segue into if there are any sneak peeks or exciting things that are happening that you can let us know about happening over at Beaver Builder. Maybe AI related, but maybe not. Yeah, we actually have a lot of projects in development. We used to be, um, I guess, a little bit behind closed doors a lot of times. Like we, we didn't want the secret to come out too early. But now we're trying to be more transparent, be more open about what projects we're working on. And Justin Boos, the co-founder of Beaver Builder, actually wrote two blog posts recently about upcoming features and product development that they're working on. And we've actually published it. We shared it. And if you check out those blog posts, we actually have screenshots, you know, video clips and uh, examples of what that new technology is going to look like. And what we found is um, being more transparent and letting people know what's coming ahead has actually been a good thing. It's actually created a lot of buzz. People are really excited about it. It's something for people to look forward to. And it just shows that we're continuing to grow. Uh, We're definitely not stagnant. We're continuing to add more to our product, continue to improve our product for our customers. And we're listening to their feedback because a lot of the ideas that we're implementing came from their feedback and their suggestions. Nice. I I love to hear stuff like that, like uh, giving the clients exactly what they want and a solution to their problems. Actually, those are Adam's words. I think he drops that at least (laughs) once in every podcast, but I got him this time. Here you go. (laughs) All right. So the name of this pod, this podcast is Woo Biz Chat. So business, a lot of people listening to this have a business in WordPress and WooCommerce. Recently, you all made the decision to update pricing. Pricing is one of those topics that business owners in WordPress and really most any business struggle with. How do we price this product? What are the repercussions of pricing? We know why we change pricing is that profit and different reasons. But I recognize that if you could maybe take us back behind the curtain a little bit and share with us. So Beaver Builder has updated its pricing. Can you walk us through the the thought process, the the steps you took to get to where you are today? And yeah, some of the things that might have made you nervous and hate, no, we're going to do this. I'd love to just hear your thinking on on pricing and price changes. Yeah, this is actually a really good discussion because we just published a blog post last week about announcing our upcoming pricing changes that are going to happen in September. Now, before I even dive into that, I just want to let you know that if any existing Beaver Builder customers have a subscription, this does not impact them in any way. Their subscription, their plans will all remain the same. They do not have to worry. Yeah, that's a choice right there. That's part of a you know philosophy is that we're going to grandfather people. And I don't, why do we call it grand? We call it grandmothering. I don't know. Uh, we're going to keep the people who are on our current plan the same. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, I I, I want to hear more. Yeah. So Beaver Build hasn't changed their pricing for over ten years. Oh. Wow. Okay. And of course, uh, over those ten years, um, the costs of things have gone and up and have changed. But we struggled with changing our pricing because we care about our customers and we didn't want to interrupt what their, you know, their current pricing models at any time. And so when we did kind of go through this process, we always thought of them first. These are our legacy customers. Some of these customers have been around for five, seven, eight, ten years. And we really wanted to, you know, I guess reward them from being loyal to us, that we're not going to interrupt their pricing. We're going to keep it all the same. So that was number one. It was a very rule number one. We do not mess with legacy customers' pricing subscriptions. These are only impacting uh, new customers. But we also didn't want to go with the, hey, you know, we're just going to raise prices to raise prices because that just doesn't feel good either. We're, we're really about the people. So we said, how can we add more value to our new customer base? And one of the feedback that we got was over the years is they said, hey, 
Can you include Beaver Themer into all your pricing plans? Now, Beaver Themer, when it came out in 2017, it was a new new thing. Theme Builders was not around. So Beaver Themer was one of the first to, to do it, or if the one the first to do it. And so it was a new revolutionary product. So of course, we want to felt like, hey, this is a new product. We want to be able to provide it as an add-on subscription. If people want to use it, they can purchase it. If not, Beaver Builder, as the way as, as it is, works great. But over the years, as we have more competitors, our competitors started building theme builders included into their pricing plans. So we said, okay, we want to be competitive to our competitors. So we're going to include Beaver Themer in all our new pricing plans. We're going to include the WordPress Beaver Builder theme in all of our pricing plans. And we're going to change our lowest pricing package of $99 to $89. So it lowers the barrier to entry for any new customer that just wants to build one website. They'll get all of our products, the page builder, the theme, and Beaver Themer for only $89, which I think makes us very competitive. Um, And and, and then some of our other pricing plans, like our highest tier plan, our unlimited plan, is actually still the same. So not only did we lower our lowest price, we kept our highest price the same. And then our middle tier is just slightly higher, but it includes everything. It includes Beaver Themer. So we really said, hey, you know, how can we balance um, providing value and still, you know, make us competitive to the market? And and, and then the only main differentiator uh, or that if our legacy users are is before all of our plans in our legacy packages are unlimited. Now we have some site limitations. So our middle tier is like 50 site limits. Our highest tier is unlimited and our our lowest tier is one. But here's the thing. We took it one step further. We didn't just throw out any random number. We did a lot of digging into our uh, analytics. And we did a case study of all of our customers out there. How many people each subscription, how many people have, how many websites have they built, all these things and different pricing packages. We ran the numbers and we said, okay, if we were to make this this change, would it drastically impact our customers or any of our new customers? And the answer is no. So we found a really nice balance where it's like, we're going to give you more value. Yeah, we're going to give you site limitations, but 90% of you are not even going to be impacted, even if you change the new plans. But if you stay at the old ones, you're still going to be okay. It was like a very well thought out process. I'm very proud of the team. It took us months to really come to where we are today. And even then, before we're pulling the trigger, we kind of like announced it to our Facebook group just to get some initial feedback to see if anyone brought any things that we didn't think of that we might need to adjust. And luckily, um, it's been really well received. So we're very excited to, uh, to push it out. Nice. Congratulations on that because it sounds like it was something that you had to think through a lot. There was a lot of questions on are we doing this the right way? And it wasn't just we need more money, raise prices. Like it was, (laughs) you know, it, it was done the Beaver Builder way where you guys think through things and care a lot about your community. So well done there. I'll, but you say it's not actually September is when this is, is going is going live. Yes. Yes. Yeah, September, uh, I believe it's like September 10th or 11th, somewhere around that range is when we're going live. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I will definitely say that we really wanted to focus on our customers, our community, and we did not want to upset them in any way. And and that's one thing we definitely led with was like this this, this new plan does not impact you if you're not changing your subscription <laughs> you legacy users you're still good <laughs> there you go so if you are listening to this podcast before uh, september 10 uh hurry up and go get your but if you're already a beaver builder you're fine right but that's actually great advice for just all the listeners out there that have pricing plans on their sites like the the thought process and all of the data that and analysis that you guys put into uh, deciding when to do the change and how to do the change and what the price is like. That's uh, something that we hopefully can adapt into our, our own business models, like however big or small your personal uh, business is. But that kind of leads me into um, 
uh, another question. Let's say somebody jumps on this before the pricing change or after, it doesn't matter. Um, and they're considering to, to try out Beaver Builder. And maybe they're a first timer for building a site in general. But uh, what would what kind of things should that they focus on to get the most out of this tool? Like, is there a right or wrong way to build a website? <laughs> is there a logical way? It can be like a maybe something you recommend from experience. But um, yeah, it, like what would be something that you just kind of would advise somebody for the first time using it? Well, if you're interested in Beaver Builder, I would say there's a couple, op- couple opportunities to try it for free. Uh, number one, we have Beaver Builder Lite, which is our free version. Uh, we've added some more features to it, by the way, recently. Um, and there's also a free live demo on our website where you can actually click. It will spin up a demo website and you can literally drag and drop the modules and you can see how it works. So there's definitely some free versions that you can use to try it before you buy it. Uh, the other thing is we have free courses, as I mentioned, not only published on our YouTube channel, but it's just available on our website. We don't try to sell you anything. We just just have you uh, log in and you can watch the video tutorial. So you can watch video tutorials and watch how to use the product. We even have a course that walks you f- from beginning to end of how to build a website. And you watch, uh, we call it follow along, um, where you just follow us building the website and we give you all the, the the design files so you can that's another way to do it as well and gosh there's like i said there's just so many resources out there there was a, a gentleman named joshua long i'm just gonna give, a, give him a shout out because he just created a course recently on webdesigntrainer.com uh, where it's a beginning to end soup to nuts uh you know how to build a website using beaver builder and it's very well created i want to give him a shout out also, like WP101, I've also like created a course on how to use basic WordPress. Their video tutorials are great, but they also have some course uh, content regarding Beaver Builder. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to learn about Beaver Builder, learn about WordPress, and learn how to use WooCommerce too. So hopefully, don't be scared. Just jump in, you know, take it a little bit at a time, day by day, and you'll be able to be surprised at what you can create in a couple of days. Yeah, I was very impressed. I I googled WooCommerce and Beaver Builder, and Will Morris wrote a really in depth article, just step by step, how to build WooCommerce site using Beaver Builder, and it is yeah, just a very well done tutorial with videos, and I think that type of attention to detail is one of the reasons why Beaver Builder is so popular. I think Elementor and, and no no shade to them at all, great people over there. But one of the Beaver Builder feels to me like it's the page builder for the people that know. Like it's the like, you know, it, it's just it kind of has that um feeling to me. And one thing I liked is that in that article, someone asked a question and you were the first person to answer it. There was another one back in 2021, like this article's been updated. And so you personally hopped in and answered a question. And I think that uh, just goes to who Beaver Builder is and and what you guys really stand for. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah, we're definitely, for the people, we try to be personal. And actually, if we're going to be out in WordCamp US. So if you are in Portland this year, feel free to say hi to us. The founders are going to be there, Billy, Robbie, and Justin and I. Um, so yeah, make sure you, you come and say hi. We'll have a booth out there too. Very cool. Yeah, I was just going to ask. Um, so if anybody wants to get to know Beaver Builder, WordCamp US, we'll all be there. Yeah, hopefully with a beaver with a sore hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I have high expectations. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, WordPress uh, US is just around the corner. So if you have more personal questions to ask Anthony or colleagues, go find him at his booth wherever that may be in the, in the large conference hall. But uh, is there maybe something that we didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about and related like related to Beaver Builder, WordPress, a Woo site, or it can be completely unrelated as well. We're always down with that. <laughs> maybe something we forgot. Well, I, I'll just, I guess I'll just leave with this. Um, you know, one of the great things about WordPress I found is the community and whatever product or products you use within WordPress, I think it, it, we all just look at it a big ecosystem. We're all one big family. 
uh, especially notice it when we go to like WordCamps, the WordPress meetups, local meetups, and of course the big conferences, the big WordCamp US, WordCamp Europe, Asia, et cetera. Uh, there's just this really amazing community where we're all just friends and we all geek out about the same thing. And it's just fun to be able to kind of like hang out with like-minded people. So I would say if you haven't gone to one of these live events, please do. It's a lot of fun. And uh, a lot of people put a lot of work into hosting these events. So uh, make a trip have, and uh, hopefully we'll meet you all there. Fantastic. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for supporting the WordPress community by attending these events. And again, yeah. Uh, stop by and meet Anthony and the good people of Beaver Builder at a WordCamp near you. Thank you for this time. And this has been another episode of Woo Biz Chat. Uh, you can find us wherever you find uh, podcasts. Please share this podcast with people that you care about. If you don't care about them, don't share it with them. But if you do care about people, you should share this podcast because you will get to meet amazing people like Anthony and learn about uh, the companies of WordPress that are doing the work such as Beaver Builder. And with that, thank you so much. We hope you guys have a great rest of your day.